Hi guys and welcome to my bookshelf tour. There's nothing I like better than being nosy and looking at what other people have on their bookshelves. So I'm very happy to be bringing you today my own bookshelf tour. You may have seen recently if you watched my bookshelf reorganisation and renovation vlog that I have got new bookcases recently. I've been making do over the past few years and using anything I can to store my books but recently I got custom built bookshelves and you can see the result behind me. I've had lots of fun working out where everything should go and working out my own system of how I want to organise and store my books so that's what I'm going to be showing you today and hopefully you'll get some ideas for your own bookshelves. For some background information before I get into the books because I know you're going to be very eager to see exactly what is on my shelves. The bookshelves are custom built like I said they were made by a local carpenter and not by me because I could never do anything like what this was like. They are made from MDF and then they were painted by me and my mum so they are white because that goes with the decor in here. I wanted them to fit around my bed because I was using up a lot of floor space but there was a lot of wall space that wasn't being used in here so I wanted to clear a lot of the floor where my books were and so having this has really transformed the way that I store my books and look after them. I think they're much better looked after now and I can access everything really easily. The way that my books are organised is to make sure that when I'm looking for something I know exactly where it is. So I have things stored by genre and category and really they are exactly where I think they will be. I have lots of authors together that make sense in my head but might not make immediate sense to you just because those are the authors that I associate together or who I think go nicely together even if they might not have agreed in their lifetime. And also when it came to designing the shelves and to making sure that they were exactly how I wanted. It was very important to me that these were still working bookshelves, that things could still be moved around and taking lots out, uh, putting things in all of the time. So I wanted it to be easy to do so. I do work with my bookshelves a lot in filming videos, in researching for books that I'm writing, and I really wanted that to reflect all of my interests and everything I would be doing with it. So that's the background information. Now I will get onto the bit you have been waiting for for and I will show you what is on my bookshelves. So I'm going to start by talking to you about these two shelves in the middle. These are what you see when you come into my bedroom from my stairs and so they were the ones that I wanted to place the most important books to me on because I knew they're the ones that were just going to be the statement in the room. So I've got all my very special editions on here, all my Penguin English Library books, all my Penguin Cloth band classics, some vintage classics too, and also some Virago modern classics. So these are all the very special editions of books and I think the prettiest editions of books that I own. And then above that shelf you have all of my Bronte books but I'll get into them a bit more specifically when I get onto them because there's a lot of Bronte books, a lot of actual Bronte books and then lots of Bronte non-fiction. I knew I wanted them up there because I have so many of them and they really wouldn't have fitted anywhere else. So starting on the top I have a copy of Paradise Lost which is a Penguin cloth bound classic but it wouldn't fit with the others so it is living there for now and it isn't one of the ones I've read so I don't mind relegating it to this corner. Then I have The Ghost Stories of Edith Wharton which is a recent purchase that I made because I'm really loving reading Edith Wharton's books at the moment. And then we have all of my Daphne du Maurier books or some of my Daphne du Maurier books as you'll see later. These are all of the ones that are in the Virago Modern Classics series and I think that they are the best of Daphne du Maurier's books. So we have My Cousin Rachel which I have read and loved, we have Rebecca and Jamaica Inn which I just adore and then two I haven't read yet but I'm saving, Frenchman's Creek and The Birds which is a collection of her short stories. I really love Daphne du Maurier and I think that these are some really good editions of her books to own, they're very sturdy, look 
absolutely gorgeous and I must say that these were gifted to me quite a few years ago now so I'm not really sure if it counts when My Cousin Rachel the film was released so I was very kindly gifted these as I have with some other books on my bookcases but in fact most of these are ones that I bought myself either secondhand or in new editions or were given to me uh, but I really love these editions of Daphne du Maurier and I'm sure that they still do them so if you're looking for a good edition then these are amazing. And then living immediately next to Daphne we have my Charles Dickens and also two Russian classics. These are all very big paperbacks published by Vintage Classics and so I've had to cram them on in this way which I actually quite like. I think it was quite effective. I did have to jiggle them about a bit because they didn't fit when I tried it other ways. So we have A Christmas Carol, A Tale of Two Cities, Oliver Twist and Hard Times and then at the bottom we have Great Expectations and David Copperfield. Out of these I have read A Christmas Carol and I'm currently reading Oliver Twist and I've tried Hard Times but it's not one of my favourite books. In fact it's one of my least favourite books. I don't really like it. And I've also read Great Expectations which is probably my favourite of Charles Dickens's books. And then the two Russian classics I have are War and Peace and Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I am also currently reading Anna Karenina and it's taking me ages because I haven't found the motivation recently. But I do really like it and maybe I'll read War and Peace one day but I'm not sure. I like Anna Karenina so that's enough for me right now. Next to Charles Dickens we have my Penguin Cloth Band Classics box set of all of Jane Austen's novels. I have quite a few of the Cloth Band Classics. They are a bit pricier but I find that it's worth it because they have really detailed notes. They look gorgeous and I also find they're very substantial books. Everything about these books I love. So in the Jane Austen box set we have Sense and Sensibility, Northanger Abbey, Mansfield Park, Love and Friendship, Persuasion, Emma and Pride and Prejudice. So I've read most of these. I'm currently reading Sense and Sensibility. I want to read Emma soon and I haven't read Love and Friendship yet but all the others. It would be difficult to decide my favourite of her books. Maybe Pride and Prejudice, maybe Northanger Abbey, maybe Persuasion. Um, yeah, that's not very decisive. I just, I love her writing. She is one of a kind. Jane Austen and my other cloth band classics are sandwiched in between three F. Scott Fitzgerald books. So we have Tender is the Night in the middle, we have This Side of Paradise, and also The Beautiful and the Damned. They have gorgeous foiling, these editions. They are hardbacks, and I haven't read any of these yet because I've only read The Great Gatsby, but I'm hoping to read This Side of Paradise. Paradise before the end of the year if I can manage it. And then the other cloth band classics I own are Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray, another book I'm currently reading but it's taking me ages because it's so long. I think I'm going to resort to reading it now as an audiobook because I think I'll be more motivated to finish it that way. I have Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, Middlemarch by George Eliot which I'm hoping next year might be the year I finally read it. I've been saying it for years but maybe 2020. We have The Sonnets and A Lover's Complaint by William Shakespeare. My favourite sonnet of his is Sonnet 116. I love it. Studied it twice in my GCSEs and my A-levels and it's basically one of my favourite poems ever. We have The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, then Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, and finally at the bottom Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. I'm not gonna say I want to read it next year because that might jinx it but I do want to try to read it soon because I don't know a lot about it and I haven't even watched an adaptation of it or seen the play so maybe next year will be the year. I'm not going to commit myself to that though. And then next to those are The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. It is the return of my face as I explain to you what is going on with my Penguin English Library editions. I love these. They were my video filming background for years and years and I wanted them to be in the middle where I think they belong, right above my head as I'm sleeping. 
So I have organised these in a specific way. So at the side right here we have books that were written pre-Victorian, they might be 18th century or in some cases 19th century but they are pre-Victorian. Then in the middle we have my Victorian books, even though Dracula is over here because I've been reading it recently and there's no room, we've got Elizabeth Gaskell and then more Victorian books and then some E.M. Forster who I just love. I've already found my love of E.M. Forster this year and I think he's amazing. And then we have my 20th century Penguin English Library. These are ones that were released more recently so I'll show you in detail now but that's how I've chosen to organise them because that is the way that I can find them most easily think. When was that book written? Ah that's where it's going to be. So that's how I try to organise all my books that uh, could be quite confusing in these editions. So that's how I've done it and I'm very pleased with that. I think I'm going to keep that for as long as possible until they all get mixed up, jumbled up. But I think it works really well. I find that I can find them easily because of this system. So here we are. On the left we have Evelina by Frances Burney, The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy by Lawrence Stern, then Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and then some Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So we have A Study in Scarlet, The Sign of Four, The Hand of the Baskervilles, and The Valley of Fear. They I wanted to put together, but there wasn't enough room when I put them on my Victorian piles, so they've sneaked on the end. And then we have my Charles Dickens. So we have Christmas Carol, Oliver Twist, then Wookie Collins's The Moonstone, and The Woman in White. More Charles Dickens, I've realised that I don't know what I've done with the organisation here. I think I've been using Oliver Twist and A Christmas Carol so I've just put them back on top. But we have A Tale of Two Cities and then Little Dorrit. I haven't read either of these but I feel like I should soon. Then we have Great Expectations and then finally at the bottom some Bronte books. So we have Charlotte's Villette, Emily's Wuthering Heights, then Shirley, my favourite book of all time, and Anne Bronte's The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. Then next to those are Elizabeth Gas schools North and South Cranford and William Makepeace Thackeray's Vanity Fair. You'll see that I have a few duplicates here that I have in the Penguin Crossbound Classics. That's really just because I maybe got these ones first and wanted something with more detailed notes in or I really like the additions so I treated myself to them. I don't really think I have a preference between the two, it's just if I'm looking for something with more explanation then I go towards the Crossbounds and I just like the look of the Penguin English Library even though they might not be practical in terms of the notes and detailed things in them. Okay let's move on to some Bronte books and the way that I've organised these is by each book. So on the far left we have the Bronte sisters the three novels which is published by Barnes and Noble and was a present from a friend so that has three novels Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights and Agnes Grey so it goes on the end because it's all of them. We then have Wuthering Heights uh, another edition of Wuthering Heights so I've got quite a few of these it's one of my favourite books and you might think that it's a bit excessive to have so many copies but all of these books have different editions they have different notes and introductions that tell you a lot about the books also I'm just a bit of a hoarder when it comes to Bronte books and I know that I probably shouldn't buy any more but I just like having these gorgeous editions that I can read and I genuinely do read all of them and I have read all of the books on this part of the shelf so I don't mind that because I use them all equally. We then have my copies of Shirley so I've got I think in total maybe about nine copies of Shirley not all of them are here because some of them are in older editions but it's my favourite book ever so forgive me I just needed all of these copies. To the right of that we have two copies of Agnes Grey and then a copy of The Professor which I haven't read yet it's the final Bronte book I have to read and I'm saving it. Maybe not a good idea because it's not the best of the Bronte books but I'm hoping I'll enjoy it nonetheless. We then have Jane Eyre which I have not that many copies of surprisingly and then two copies of Villette one of which I think is from 1910 and is an older book and slightly smells but 
I really love it. And then I have my copies of Charlotte, Emily and Anne and Branwell's Juvenilia. So we've got Tales of Angria, we have an edition edited by Christine Alexander, got a collection of Anne Bronte's poetry and my favourite book that I own, my collection of Emily's poetry. I've then got a collected edition of their poetry, some of Branwell's Juvenilia, I have the Bronte Letters and this is edited by Juliet Barker and is probably the best edition of poetry you will find. I've then got next to those my vintage editions of the Bronte books and also The Life of Charlotte Bronte by Elizabeth Gaskell. So now we're in the territory of non-fiction so I'll go around to the other side so I can show you these. Against the partition to the right we have some editions of the Bronte Studies Journal which you get if you are a member of the Bronte Society. So I put all these together, they have some really informative academic articles that people can submit and they are on a variety of topics both on the Bronte's books and also their lives and I love reading these and whilst they aren't probably for like a beginner Bronte fan because there is a lot and it's very academic they're still really good so I would recommend these. We have some Winifred Geron so I got really lucky and found Emily Bronte and Anne Bronte by Winifred Geron in a charity shop and couldn't find them anywhere else and then I got a paperback of Charlotte Bronte after finding that I got that second hand too because a lot of these I haven't been able to find anywhere else some of them aren't in print anywhere more some of them are. We have Charlotte Bronte Alive by Claire Harmon, a few that I haven't read yet, Take Courage by Samantha Ellis for example I haven't read but that isn't exactly a biography, it's more of how the Brontes have affected her life so I'm interested to read that. We have some other books in the middle by my Bronte card which I bought from the Bronte Parsonage Museum. We have Stevie Davis's Four Dreamers and Emily which is actually a fiction book about the way that Emily affected the lives of of different people in this fictional story and then you can't quite see it but at the bottom we have The Infernal World of Branwell Bronte by Daphne du Maurier. I then have some more of the Bronte's novels in the Penguin Cloth Band Classics box set so those are Jane Eyre, Villette, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall and Wuthering Heights and then probably the best books on the Bronte's I own are next to those. So those are The Bronte's by Juliet Barker which is basically the Bronte Bible. It has everything you need to know about the Bronte's. We we'll have the Bronte Myth by Lou Caster Miller which explores lots of ideas about the Brontes and how they've been formed and how they might not be accurate. And then two books I haven't read but one of which I'm not I find very interesting but wouldn't say is probably the best biography which is Lyndall Gordon's biography of Charlotte Bronte and then above that we have The Brontes by Patricia Ingham and then we have some more academic Bronte books so things that I'm not entirely sure if people would be interested in but I've just picked up along the way because of ideas that they have that I wanted to read more about. We have The Bronte Cabinet then by Deborah Lutz which is a look at things that the Brontes owned and what it says about them. Amazing if you want to find out anything Think about them a really good place to start as well. We have an old book about the Brontes which I found, we have a book about the Brontes and their connection to Ireland and then also a new biography which is called The Mother of the Brontes and I'm really looking forward to reading it. It's one of the first biographies of Charlotte's mother and her life and her family so I'm really looking forward to reading that and that is all of the Bronte books that I own. I'm gonna come across here now and show you the best books on my shelves, the best written, the best Best author, I mean I'm just joking, they are my books. The Paper and Heart Society by Lucy Powery. I have three copies of the finished book and then also two proofs and also a Paper and Heart Society mug that my publisher made for me. So this is my shrine to myself on my bookshelf. That was a bit of a tongue twister but I just love it. I love being able to display my books and I'll slowly take these down to one copy as I write more books but I just love it. I love being able to display my own book and so this is my little corner for the Paper and Heart Society. And then as we go down we have some Thomas Hardy books. I love Thomas Hardy and a lot of these books were given to me by my grandma. So on the left we have lots of of Thomas Hardy non-fiction. So we have Letters of Emma and Florence Hardy, we have The Life of Thomas Hardy written by his wife uh, Florence Hardy but really he had a lot to do with it and probably wrote it but just published it in her name. We have one of Thomas Hardy's plays, The Famous Tragedy of the Queen of Cornwall and then One Rare Fair Woman which is another collection of letters. We have more of an academic book which is F.B. Pinion's about Thomas Hardy and about lots of 
to the ideas in his books. It's a really good reference book. We have Claire Tomlin's biography which is called The Time Torn Man, then Some Recollections by his first wife, and then we move on to the actual fiction by Thomas Hardy. So I'm gonna zoom in and show you. So first of all we have Life's Little Ironies which is a collection of his short stories. This is published by Wordsworth Classics and there's lots of various different editions of his short stories and I've got quite a few of them. Some of them have duplicate stories but all of them have slightly different stories as well. We have another non-fiction which is Trevor Johnson's Thomas Hardy, another one that is basically Thomas Hardy 101. Then moving again on to his fiction we have The Return of the Native and The Distracted Preacher and Other Tales. I read The Return of the Native earlier this year in the summer and really enjoyed it. One of my favourites I think it's right up there with my favourites and then we have this big stack a lot of which came from my grandma and then I completed the books I didn't have in these editions which are the Macmillan editions of Thomas Hardy's novels. So we have The Hand of Ethelberta, The Woodlanders which are oh. I love this book so much. The Mayor of Casterbridge which I haven't read yet. Desperate Remedies, A Pair of Blue Eyes, A Laodicean? A Laodicean? Not too sure how to say that. The Dinners, which is another play, and then Thomas Hardy's selected stories and also selected shorter poems of Thomas Hardy. And then moving on round we have Under the Greenwood Tree, An Indiscretion in the Life of an Heiress, which is more short stories, A Changed Man, The Trumpet Major, The Well Beloved, Jude the Obscure, which just blew my mind when I read it, A Group of Noble Dames, and then some more collections of poetry which come in the Penguin Little Black Classic series. Down from Thomas Hardy we have lots of my shared editions of books so I'm going to just give you the highlights of these um, but if you want to know more specifically about a book you can always ask just because I haven't read all of these. So we have my Persephone books. So I've got Despised and Rejected by Rose Alatini at the top which I haven't read yet but it's up there because I want to read it soon. We have some that I have read like A Writer's Diary by uh, Virginia Woolf but edited by her husband Leonard Woolf. We have The Mystery of Mrs Blancaro by Mrs Oliphant which I recently featured in my Victoba TBR and I'm reading at the moment. We have some Dorothy Whipple like Young Anne and Doreen by Barbara Brunoble, some Julie Strachey, I have lots of Bloomsbury set or Bloomsbury related books in the Persephone books editions like also the journals of Catherine Mansford here. We've got books I have read like Someone at a Distance by Dorothy Whipple and also Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson and then another few that I really want to read soon like Saplings by Noel Streetfield um, and then I've got a bit of a gap here for a few more but I don't think this shelf is going to take many more books but I'm really pleased with it. I would also quite like to read The Making of a Marchioness soon by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And then here I have some Penguin Modern Classics. They've all got these gorgeous white spines, some of which aren't so white anymore, which is a shame. But I've got books like Laurie Lee's Village Christmas, Sam Salvin's The Lonely Londoners, The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank, Ernesto Sabato's The Tunnel, which I read earlier in the year. Really loved that. It was so intense, but in a kind of good way. Tennessee Williams, The Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, because at the bottom I have a streetcar named Desire, which I studied. Lots of Jean Rhys. I've read Wide Sargasso Sea, but want to read some more of her soon. So I've got Good Morning Midnight, A Voyage in the Dark, and then her collected short stories. We have George Orwell's Down and Out in Paris and London, and a few other books too that I'm not really sure when I'll read, but they're all here waiting to be read. Then here I have um, some of the new ones that have blue spines. So you have Marcel Proust in search of lost time and also the prime of Miss Jean Brodie which I am reading at the moment and it's really good but I just haven't quite finished it yet. And then finally I have some Oxford World classics. I don't always love these editions, I find them quite hit or miss. I don't love the way they are formatted but they do have good notes. I just don't find the notes easy to access as I'm reading. But there's a few here I'd like to read um, soon as well. So I'd like to read Indiana by George Sand because I'd like to read some of her work. Mole Flanders, 
Brothers by Daniel Defoe. We have things like Mary Wollstonecraft. I have Mary in the Wrongs of Woman. We go way back in time to things like The Old Arcadia by Philip Sidney, who I really love. George Gissing's New Grub Street. And then Darwin's On the Origin of Species. Wordsworth and Coleridge's Lyrical Ballads. And that's kind of the highlights of this shelf. I really love this shelf and I go to it a lot because I find there's a huge range of books here to choose from, from all kinds of time periods and all kinds of genres. So I really love this whole shelf. Then we pan across to this little cubby hole, which I can't really fit anything into, but I've got some of the Macmillan Collector's Library editions, which are really small and fit into here. So I've got things like Frances Hodgson Bennett's The Secret Garden and Jane Eyre. I've also got my copy of The Great Gatsby, which I have had for years and really love. I've got Greta Thunberg's No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference. And then two Penguin Little Black Classics for some reason. I don't know why they're here, but that's just where they live. It's fine. Then in this very square shelf below that, I have lots of Ian Forster and also some other Edward Woodian authors. So I've got Morris, which I just love. I read it this year and I just think it's amazing. I've got Aspects of the Novel, which is a non-fiction book by Ian Forster, and also some of his selected stories. Then the other Edwardian books I've got include Edmund Goss's Father and Son, The Complete Short Stories of Saki, uh, The Foresight Saga Volume 1 by John Galsworthy, The Old Wives' Tale by Arnold Bennett, and The Riddle of the Sands by Erskine Childers. Down here I've got more collections of book editions, so lots of Penguin classics with the traditional black spines, so on the far right we've got things like Zola's Germinal, we've got The Confessions of a Child of the Century by Alfred de Musset, some Norwegian classics like Kristin Lovrensdatter by Sigurd Unset, we have some more Mary Wollstonecraft and then things like Melmoth the Wanderer, The Three Musketeers and some poetry with Alfred Lord Tennyson and Percy Bysshe Shelley. We have some more Virago modern classics in their 40th anniversary editions, Heartburn by Nora Ephron, The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter, Deep Water by Patricia Highsmith and Rosamund Lehman's The Weather in the Streets. Then I have my vintage red spined classics. So I love these books. There's some that I really need to read soon that I've been saying I need to read for ages. Things like The Bloody Chamber and Other Stories by Angela Carter. I'd also love to read Herland by Charlotte Perkins Gilman because I've already read The Yellow Wallpaper. Love to finish Ruby Fruit Jungle which I don't think is the best book I've ever read but I haven't finished it yet and um, nearly at the end. Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde and Other Stories by Robert Louis Stevenson. Things like Beloved by Toni Morrison. I've also got The Door by Magda Zabo and The Awakening by Kate Chopin. Out of the Stack I've got Claudine at School by Colette. I've got Picnic at Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay. And then I've got other books just in other editions like The Bridge Over the Drina by Eva Ondrich which was recommended to me by lots of you so I need to read it. Then got The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens and some Wordsworth classics like D.H. Lawrence, John Cleland and George and Whedon Grossmith's The Diary of a Nobody which I read recently and just think that I loved it. I loved it so much. I've then got more Penguin uh, books and also some Wordsworth classics. I've got Charles Dickens's The Old Curiosity Shop. I've got Dangerous Liaisons, A Portrait of the Art as a Young Man by James Joyce. We've got some Oscar Wilde on there like De Profundis and also his play The Decameron by Boccaccio and Nikolai Leskov's Lady Macbeth of Matensk and other stories. So a real mix of books on this shelf but I really love it. And then on these shelves on the other side we have things like lots of Elizabeth Gaskell and I've grouped everything by century so I've got 19th century women, I've got 20th century women and then pre-Victorian women. Also the Mabinogian has snuck onto here but it needs to go somewhere else but I'm not sure where yet. I've got a biography of Fanny Burney by Claire Harmon and then Fanny Burney's journals and letters. We have some biographies like Gentleman Jack by Angler Steidler and also Helena Whitbread's edited versions of Anne Lister's diaries. Got Mary Shelley's The Last Man and Belinda by Mariah Edgeworth which I really want to read soon. And then going back, well no, going forward in time actually to the 20th century women I've got 
uh, The Heat of the Day by Elizabeth Bowen, got some Agatha Christie on there, The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall, Sylvia Plath's Johnny Panic and the Bible of Dreams, and then some Stella Gibbons too. I read Cold Comfort Farm at the beginning of 2019 and now really want to read everything else she ever wrote. In between the other books then I've got all my Sylvia Plath, so The Bell Jar, The Colossus and Ariel. And then we can sneak across and look at my Victorian women. So I've got East Lynn by Mrs Henry Wood, which I really, really need to read soon. I've got some more Mary Elizabeth Braddon, Aurora Floyd and The Doctor's Wife, some George Eliot, I've got Harriet Martineau's Deerbrook and then also part one of Harriet Martineau's autobiography and then some Mrs Oliphant too and then at the side we have all my Elizabeth Gaskell or the rest of my Elizabeth Gaskell so I've got her letters, I've got Ruth, I've got Mary Barton, Wives and Daughters, Cranford and Cousin Phyllis and then two biographies of her by Jenny Uglow and Winifred Geron. Now I shall go down and show you my children's shelf so we've got my Beatrix Potter and uh, to the left and then lots of Eve Ibbotson. So she wrote uh, adult books as well and I've included them on here because they're very colourful. I love how colourful this shelf is compared to the rest of it. My favourite of these is probably The Morning Gift and maybe A Company of Swans too but I love all of her books and still have most of the top ones to read. We've got some other classics like C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, Ballet Shoes by Noel Streetfield, Thomas Midnight Garden by Philippa Pierce, one of my favourite books The Fairy Caravan by Beatrix Potter. They Things then like Carrie's War which I read when I was younger and then we move on to my Ellen Montgomery and then some other classics too. So I've got all of Ellen Montgomery's Anne books, so I've got Anne of the Island, Anne of Green Gables, Anne of Avonlea and then the other three that I haven't read yet and then on the right we have some Puffin classics like Black Beauty by Anna Sewell, Little Princess, The Wind in the Willows, Heidi, all my Louisa May Alcott books and then sneaking down the bottom, we have The Wolves of Willoughby Chase by Joan Aiken and The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper. My Daphne du Maurier books live over here. So I've got pretty much all of her books now, I think. Rebecca is probably my favourite out of these and I have two or three copies of it. One that I already had, one that they released for the anniversary. I've got a biography called Mandalay Forever and then lots of her other books. Things like The Flight of the Falcon, The Parasites, Julius, Castle door, Mary Ann, The House on the Strand which is one I've read but didn't really love, Hungry Hill which I'm really looking forward to reading and you can't quite see it but The Loving Spirit as well. So I'm pretty sure I've got most of her books now, I don't really think I need any more uh, so I'm really pleased with how it looks. I'm so pleased that they all fit on there into that one space. I feel like this might be a potentially controversial decision but I decided to put Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville West with all my Edith Wharton books which are new acquisitions and that's quite controversial because Virginia Woolf didn't think very highly of Edith Wharton so I'm not entirely sure what she would think of being put next to her on a bookshelf but she's got to put up with it because that's how I want things to be. So I've got I think all of Virginia Woolf's books now I've got um, a biography of her at the top by Quentin Bell but it's the second uh, volume so I need to find the first from somewhere. I've got her selected essays and selected short stories, Between the Acts, To the Lighthouse, The Waves, Orlando, Mrs Dalloway, Room of One's Own, The Common Reader, Volume 1 and then all the editions of her diary, some of which were quite costly because you can't get them anywhere anymore, they're not in print but some of them were really cheap so it kind of balanced it out. I've then got at the side Night and Day, The Voyage Out, Jacob's Room and The Years, lots of different editions and something I really favour on my shelves is having lots of different editions mixed in together because I quite like the messy look. It's not about having all of one book for me or books all the same size. I like it all to be very different. Then I have some Edith Wharton at the top so I've got lots of smaller editions of her book. Then uh, some Vita Zackville West. I'm currently reading The Edwardians and I'd like to read All Passion Spent after that. I've got her family history and then some letters between her and Violet Trefusis. I then have at the bottom my Edith Wharton who is one of my new loves. I've got Summer, The Age of Innocence, The Customer of the Country, The Man's Tragedy and Other Stories and also The Buccaneers. And I like to have all of her books at some point but I'm not quite at that point yet because I haven't read many of them. Down here I have all of my my non-fiction books. So we've got things like The Private Life of Lord Byron by Anthony Peaty which is 
a brick of a book. We have Victoria the Queen by Julia Baird, a very interesting book, Victorian Guide to Sex by Fern Riddell. Then on the main stacks, things like Lost Voices of the Edwardians, lots of Lucy Worsley books, and I have Lucy Worsley books to the right as well. I have a mixture of general history, literary history, and then figures from history. So I'm really interested in the life of Mary Queen of Scots. So I've got a biography of her. We've got Young Romantics, by Daisy Hay, which is a book looking at the lives of the romantic poets like Byron, Shelley and so on. We have another biography of Mary Queen of Scots, A Million Years in a Day by Greg Jenner, The Edwardians by Roy Hattersley and then Beatrix Potter by Linda Lear which I'm hoping to read soon. We have How to Be a Tudor by Ruth Goodman, The Time Traveller's Guide to Elizabethan England by Ian Mortimer, a History of Scotland by Neil Oliver and A Short History of England by Simon Jenkins, then a a big history book about the suffragettes called Rise Up Women. We've got some literary criticism books like The Mad Woman in the Attic by Gilbert and Gubar and then the 19th century novel A Critical Reader. I've got Alexandra and Smith's The Oxford Companion to the Brontes and then Alexandra and Sellers' The Art of the Brontes which took me ages to find but I finally managed to track a copy down. I've got English Civil War which I'm interested in, The Silk Roads by Peter Frankopan, Kings and Queens. I've got A Short History of London London by Simon Jenkins, A Secret Sisterhood by Emily Midorikawa and Emma Claire Sweeney, Lucy Worsley's biography of Jane Austen at home and then Fern Riddell's Death in 10 Minutes right at the bottom. I am loving reading non-fiction at the moment so it's really good to dive into all of these. And then if I pan round I've got a short little compartment with just some random men in. So I've got Charles Dickens's The Holly Tree and other Christmas stories, some George Moore like a drama in Muslin and also Esther Waters, J. Sheridan Le Fanu's Carmilla, William Coper's translation of The Odyssey by Homer, Samuel Richardson's Pamela, some Anthony Trollope's, I've got Dr. Thorne there, George Meredith's The Egoist, Wilkie Collins's Basil and Daniel Defoe's Roxana as well as Lost Illusions by Honoré de Balzac. And then right at the bottom is where I store my old books because this is where it gets the least light, where I don't think that they'll be as damaged so I've got my oldest book which is actually this tiny little book which is an edition of William Coper's poetry and this is from 1837 there's an inscription in there from the owner in 1837 so it's a very special little book this big stack here is a collection of Bronte books from the 1890s so I've got most of them but there's a few I haven't been able to find or haven't been able to find in good editions in good quality for a cheap enough price so even though these were slightly costlier than some of my other books. They are also some of my most treasured books. So I have got most of the Bronte books there and they are so gorgeous. This book right at the end is called Wanderings of a Pen and Pencil and it is a first edition published in 1847. So that book is the same age as Jane Eyre and I need to find a better way of positioning it, I think. I've got, I think, an 1893 edition of Shirley by Charlotte Bronte, which I love. Another one of my most treasured books. The Story of Their Lives, which is a biography of Victoria and Albert, which is another book that's really gorgeous. Uh, we've got some other more random ones, so I've got things like Romola by George Eliot there, Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell, some Sir Walter Scott as well, and some other older books. I've got Byron's Poetical Works, Feats on the Fjord by Harriet Martineau, some bird books as well because that's something I'm really interested in, Wessex Tales by Thomas Hardy. On the far right stack I've got some Ellen Montgomery in these really lovely editions right at the bottom, some of these Collins's books which are really nicely bound. You've got Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, Alan Rains, Queen of the Rushes, You've got North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell which isn't too old but still lives there and then The Flight of the Falcon by Daphne du Maurier. And then I've also got a few that I haven't found places for yet so this is a copy of Jane Eyre that I paid a little too much for but it's really gorgeous and it's just amazing. I love this. I've also got The Children of the New Forest by Captain Marriott and I'm not going to read this edition even though this is a family heirloom. I actually downloaded it on my Kindle so I can read it and just keep this one 
as it is, but I'm very excited to read it. And one of the reasons I love bird books so much is that they often have really lovely pictures or illustrations, and also because I'm interested in birds. They are my favourite thing other than books, so I love collecting these old books with lots of bird information in. And then finally I'd like to show you my poetry shelf and also some of my hardbacks that I've got. These are a lot of my poetry books. I've got big books like Robert Browning's poems, uh, lots of bind-ups. I've got the Oxford Book of English Verse and collections like A Poet's Guide to Britain by Owen Shears, things like Six Centuries of Verse and The Nation's Favourite Poems. And I've got more specific books like Dreamwork, by Mary Oliver. I've got some modern poetry like Plum by Holly McNish and Hold Your Own by Kate Tempest which is one of my favourite collections. I have things like William Coper who I enjoy reading, William Wordsworth, John Clare, W.B. Yeats, more Robert Browning, Andrew Marvell, uh, Burns. I've got Elizabethan verse which I really love and other things like Sir Gowan and the Green Knight, D.H. Lawrence's poems, William Blake, John Keats, Philip Lark, in. Oh, you name it, I probably got it. Because I love delving into poetry and finding out more about the poets themselves and I think there's nothing better than a good poem sometimes. And then on the far side I've got things like Ted Hughes, Seamus Heaney, Edward Thomas. Now if I go around again you can see I've got some books here as well. So this is mostly where my Sir Walter Scott lives. I have read Waverley and really loved it and I've got some others of his I want to read soon like The Bride of Lammermoor and The Antiquary. I've got The Arabian Nights, Tales of One Thousand Nights which is the first volume. Uh, Henry Fielding as well and some D.H. Lawrence and then if I go down you can see this is where a lot of my hardbacks live so I've got some Laura Purcell which you can just see I've got the corset and also her latest book Bone China I've got Wilding by Isabella Tree which I'm listening to at the moment as an audiobook I've got some Sarah Perry I've got Melmoth I have Sally Rooney's Normal People which I want to read soon because I did really enjoy conversations with friends one of my favourite books, The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock by Imogen Hermes Gower. I've got King of Scars by Lee Bardugo, The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary, and then some popular books like The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. So I found that this is a good place to store lots of my hardbacks. I can just put them like this. And I've also got plug sockets underneath here, so I can only stack them so high. And some of these I will read and get rid of, others I've read and I'm keeping. So it's a pretty changeable shelf which I really like about it. And then the final bit really that I want to show you is this shelf which goes along the side wall. So I thought that this would be a good idea because it just added more space to the shelves and this is another shelf that is pretty changeable so I don't mind changing this up. I've got some books here that are just TBR books that I want to read and might get rid of or might not afterwards. I've got some other editions of books. I've got uh, to the left you see all my Irish Murdochs which Vintage Classics recently released, things like The Sandcastle, The Black Prince, A Fairly Honourable Defeat, The Sea, The Sea and Under the Net. And I've also got some Chiamunda and Gozi Adichie. I've got another stack next to that with things like Elena Frante's My Brilliant Friend and sat atop that is a paper cutting I suppose? Paper? template of my name in book pages which is pretty cool. Got things like I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith which I love. I'd really like to read The Light Years by Elizabeth Jane Howard soon and also I'd like to read some more Maya Angelou because I really liked her poetry. I have then got some random books there on the next pile. So I've recently been reading Georgette Heyer so I have Arabella there. I love Laura Wood's books so we've got A Sky Painted Gold and Under a Dancing Star. There's some non-fiction there like London Labour and the London Poor by Mayhew which was a big study done in the 1850s about London's poor population. There are other books like Their Eyes Are Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston and a book I'd like to read soon called The Lost Art of Keeping Secrets by Eva Price. Then we've got some Welsh women's classics like Jill by Amy Dillwyn, Rhoda Broughton's Cometh Up a Flower. I have just some really random books here and to the right you can see I've got all my Shakespeare collection too. And then finally a big collection 
collection of letters and journals and notes. So I've got Sylvia Plath's journals, Jane Austen's letters, the journals of Ellen Montgomery and the letters of Sylvia Plath which I like putting here and then some graphic novels at the end. Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks and then Alice Oseman's two Heartstopper graphic novels. And then this is the way it looks. So you go around and then my desk is there at the end so that's where I sit and work and edit videos and write my books so everything is there and that's what that looks like so it all comes around like this and then my shelf is there. So this has been my bookshelf tour I really hope you have enjoyed it and getting to look at some of the books on my bookshelves I tried to show you everything I could although there are a few spaces that I'll probably show you in a later bookshelf tour once I have figured out exactly where everything is going and what I want it to look like but this is my first bookshelf tour since I have done all of this so I really hope you have enjoyed it and if you're new to my channel hopefully you'll stick around and we'll see some of my other videos with my bookshelves in the background so thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon happy reading